Good morning, sports fans. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Saadi, and today I have something very special and very exciting for you. Today we're going to look at how I made the new Jeremy C intro animation using DaVinci Resolve Fusion. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the intro. there's a lot going on in this intro. So if you know a little bit about Fusion, how to set up nodes and how to connect things and how to create some motion graphics, but you're not sure how to put all of it together in an intro animation, this video is for you. So come on in inside, get comfortable, and I'm going to give you a glimpse into my personal workflow and my style. Let's do it. This intro was made for Jeremy C, a YouTuber with over 60,000 subscribers. His brief was pretty simple, and he basically gave me a free hand in how I wanted to go about it. I was allowed to create a whole brand identity from scratch, including logo, theme colors, typefaces, and look and feel. A big thank you to Jeremy for giving me the permission to do a project walkthrough on his animation and to share with you guys how it was made. The very first thing I shared with Jeremy was my choice of a typeface. And I wanted to go with something that was serif to give this a very high-end sort of classy look. So these were the typefaces that I sent him. And then these were the colors that I sent him. As you can see, these are very color block sort of uh, basic colors. So the main colors are going to be the blue that you see in the background and the number seven that the client had chosen to go for the main color. And the rest are just accents. After the color palette and the typeface were confirmed by Jeremy, I sent him a design of what the look and feel of the project was going to be like. So as you can see in this, there's a couple of things to note. So there's the blue color in the background. There's sort of peach color for the main logo. Then you have the accent colors going on. So these are things that I'm going to be using in the intro itself. And I wanted him to see what it would look like. You can also see that there's color block uh, rectangular shapes and they're being offset by images or video files that are going to be in the final intro. Apart from that, you also see that there is some smaller text going on in the design can't really make out what they are. So what I'm hinting at here is that I'm going to use typography not to uh, say some words, but type as a design element itself, as a shape. So more on that in a little bit. And then finally, you see some elements on top that are just being added to give it a little bit of sort of a high energy look with some geometric shapes. The project settings. Once the design was confirmed by Jeremy. I went back and I asked him uh, what his deliverables would be. So he came back to me and said that he wanted this design, uh, he wanted this animation to be in 4K. He also specified that he wanted this to be in 2 by one resolution. So 4K is not exactly two times as wide as it is high. So 2 by one is basically when you see something on a cell phone and you have those little bands on the sides that you can zoom into. So if you zoom into those, the screen pretty much becomes two by one. So let's go ahead and hit Shift 9. And I can show you here that the timeline resolution is 4320 by 2160 at 30 frames a second. All right, let's jump into Fusion and look at what's going on with the composition. So here we have, let me make this a little bit bigger. This is what it looks like. If you can, if, I don't know if you can read this here, but it says Act 1. And then as you progress, Act 2, Act 3, and Act 4, and so on. Okay? So in the brief, the client had said anywhere from 5 to 7 seconds for the intro, which is uh, pretty normal. All right, let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from, from the first node all the way till the end to show you how I created this. Now, before we start building, uh, let me show you this. This is a palette. I have a color swatches uh, up for grabs if you guys want to use it. So the way it works is it's just a bunch of uh, background nodes with some masks on them, and each one has a different color so you can program it. 
So what I did was, uh, remember those colors that we were talking about in the beginning that I had gotten approved? So you have your blue and you have your peach. And these are your main colors. And then you have those sort of brighter accents that you're going to see in this, um, in this animation. So this is what the palette looks like. And then anytime I want to use this color, I have two choices. I can either just click on it and copy it and paste it into my uh, flow so that I have exactly the same colors. Or I can connect these with expressions if I want. I've shown you guys how to do that in, in a past uh, video. And what that does is if I go and change any of these colors, because of the expressions, the rest of the animation, the rest of the, uh, the flow will also update its colors. So that's also something that you can do. All right, let's go ahead. First node. What is the first node? It's a uh, background, and I usually call it settings. Uh, it has a black color and 100% uh, transparency, so basically it's uh, nothing. Let's go ahead and view it. So basically nothing. And then in here, I have the width and the height uh, assigned to it, and I also have a color depth assigned to it. So what this is going to do is, because this node is piped into the background of everything else that's on the foreground, in the whole animation, all 5,000 nodes or whatever, because it's in the background, it's actually going to drive the uh, settings for the project for me. So everything else will be in relation to this. As you know, Fusion is resolution independent. Let's go to the second one. This is the uh, blue, and there's a vignette attached to it. So if I increase it for you, you can actually see. So. And also, there's a grain node here. As you know, every time you look at some of my uh, compositions in my work, you'll, you'll notice that I usually, even when I'm working with flat colors, I always have some kind of a texture or noise attached to it. And that's just my personal style. Okay. And then down here, you have these acts. They are in an underlay to sort of organize things for me a little bit. I usually don't make these underlays when I'm working on the project, they're made after everything is done. And this is to sort of organize things and make it easier to go back and edit. So there's a sort of a color code going on and uh, you know you can come up with your own. This is just mine. All the acts are gonna be in this teal color. And then the smaller ones, the light blue means that there's some bands. The pink one means that there's some lettering. And then the green one, uh, for some reason, it's not showing up underlays inside of underlays usually uh, you know have some trouble showing up so the this lime green one means that it's some kind of graphical elements inside okay so let's move on to this bands and uh, there's something interesting happening here i'm going to show you so these yellow things see these these yellow things are the render range right so down here i'm going to type in render my composition, not in its entirety, but from frame zero to frame 60, okay? So this is the yellow render range. And I'm going to move this forward as I go because uh, if I start rendering the whole project all the time, it's gonna take forever. And then underneath, you have what we call a two-handed bar, a two-handed scroll bar, and I can zoom into the timeline by moving this around, all right? Interestingly, right now, these bands are actually not rectangular shapes. They're actually letters. And why are they letters, Sadi? Why aren't they rectangular shapes? Well, because the J letter, if you zoom in, you can see that it curves up, okay? So this is the first hint that you're going to get in the project, that typography is being used not for words and thoughts and messages, uh, but typography is also being used as a design element to create shapes, okay? So just like an O is a letter O, but it's also the shape circle, right? Same concept. All right, so let's go ahead and render these three nodes and see what's going on. So the colors of these three bands or these letters as you can see, the gray one has a lot more curve to it. You can see that here. 
So the colors are coming from the swatch that we talked about earlier, and we're, we're going to be reusing the same colors to sort of drive home that point. Okay. So now that it's rendered, it's playing in its full uh, speed. You can see that this is what these bars do. Okay. As you can see, they're all moving in different locations and they're also moving at different speeds. Uh, the gray one is zoomed in a little more than the others. Let's go ahead and quickly look at the spline editor and see what kind of splines are happening here. So let me zoom in. So this is the letter J and this is an XF, also called a transform node. Okay, so I'm going to click on that and click on fit. And now I can see the curve. 